Have you turned your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11? We'll go down to verse number 27. Through verse number 30. Genesis chapter 11. For this morning's message, Genesis chapter 11, verse 27 down through 30. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor, Nahor took them wives, the same of Abram's wife was Sarah. The name of Sarah's wife, Abram's wife was Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka. Come on and read. But Sarah was barren. But Sarah was barren. She had no child. She had no child. So here we have, after the flood, Abraham, who was the son of Terah, his brother, Haran, had a child whose name was Lot. So Abraham, which was 10 generations after Noah, God was desiring to establish a people on the earth. He had cleansed the world from sinful conditions through the baptism of the flood. But mankind will be mankind. And not long after, the conditions of sinfulness and ungodliness had once again began filling the earth. So God wanted to have a people. And he needed someone to raise up a people through. And here the story is coming. You're seeing Abraham, his father, his brother who passed away, had a son named Lot. Abraham took Lot basically as his own child. And they were going to another place. So here God wanted to establish a people because of the ungodliness. In fact, during this time, polytheism was the norm. That was the belief in multiple gods. But in the midst of this, Abraham yet stayed true to the one true God. So God saw something in Abraham that invoked him to select him to raise up a people to. Now there was a problem. Abraham married a wife named Sarah. Sarah was barren. In order to perpetuate the people, she had to have a child. But she was barren, and she had been married for some time. So this posed a challenge. Let's look at Abraham's call. Go down to chapter 12, read verse number 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Abram, get thee out of this country, and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. Many times when God is endeavoring to use a person, you could just write this down as we're going to our point, my God. But many times when God wants to use someone, he's going to push you out your comfort zone. 
Here Abraham was with his people doing this thing, this, that, and the other. God said, get yourself up. you too comfortable. My God, you, you're too relaxed. Amen. Everything is right here. You see where your meals are coming from. You know who got your back, who don't. You got all the support around you. Many times when God is going to use you at your highest level, he's going to shake some stuff up. He's going to get you out your comfort zone. You're not going to be able to see how every dot going to be connected. Listen, don't worry about how every dot going to be connected, every bill going to be paid. You just got to focus on a clear word from the Lord. Once you get a clear word from the Lord, amen, you got to trust God. Where God guides, he will provide. All right, come on and read. So Abraham's faith is being tested. Come on. And I will make thee a, a great nation, mm -hmm. and I will bless thee. And make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. My Lord. And I will bless them that bless thee. Remember that. This is true, true biblical prosperity. Away with that idea that God wants you to get a Bentley and wants you to get this so you can ride around in a, a, a nine-bedroom house and only got no children and all this other stuff. God blesses a person to be a blessing. Did you hear what he said here? God blesses for you to be a blessing, not for you to just walk around with your chest stuck out like you got all this, that, and the other. When God truly blesses, amen, he's blessing you to be a blessing. Let me even go to spiritual perspective. If God anoints you, it's not for you to show off. It's not for you to put up and act like you got all of this power. You anointed. Oh, everybody love. Look at me. I can sing like this. I can teach like this. I can pray like this. I can. If God anoints you, it's not about you. If God blesses you, it's not about you. It's because he wants to give you a gift that you will go and give someone else. That's why it's a shame. Had these preachers going around taking five and six offerings in one service. My God, folk got to catch a bus to church. And they sitting out here with an entourage with three different big old luxury vehicles, this, that, and the other. Amen. If God blesses you, amen, with a gift, it's not for you to exploit the people with that gift. Amen. If God blesses you, you didn't uh, 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 freely, it came to you. So freely give it, amen. So here he said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you that you may be a blessing. Come on and read. And I will bless them that bless thee, uh -huh. and curse them that curse thee. Watch, watch yourself mess with the people of God. <laughs> oh, watch yourself. Walk lightly. Walk lightly. To walk lightly. If you don't know nothing, just stay neutral. Stay quiet. Stay prayerful. I'm, I'm just alarmed at people who just jumps at stuff. Just, just the, the, the latest wave, just jump. Say stuff they shouldn't be saying. Stuff that they don't know about. Stuff that they ain't affirmed. You better be careful. You must want to say the wrong thing and you ain't, oh, be careful. You find yourself fighting against God. Just saying anything. Like, be careful. Be real careful. I did one brother happened sometime. He said, I said, man, won't you just deal? Won't you say? He said, no, no, no. I'm just going to take my time. I'm like, God deal with it. See, therefore, you, therefore, you, you know, you, you're in a safe spot. But you go beyond the mark. Come on and read. I will bless them that bless thee. Yes. And curse him that curse thee. In other words, you ain't got to fight your own battles. Read. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh-huh. So Abram departed, and the Lord had spoken unto him. My Lord. And Lot went with him. Yes. And Abram was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Come on and read. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had mm -hmm. gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. Mm -hmm. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And into the land of Canaan they came. All right. So here you see Abraham's call. Go to a place that he knew not of. By faith he obeyed. He was 75 years old. And Sarah historically, the historian believes she was around 65 years old at the time where God gave this promise that he would bless through his seed, although his wife was barren. Now in chapter 12, you see that as it continues, it's the deception of Abraham. He was traveling to this land. By faith he went, and he was traveling to this land, and they came through a place called Egypt. And Abraham's wife was fine. Sarah was real fine. She was so fine that when they saw the entourage coming through, Abraham knew he was in trouble because the king at that time he had his choice. 
The king could do what he wanted to do. I don't care who you were, what you were, the king could do what he wanted to do. So the king, they came through, some of the king's men came through, seen the entourage, saw Sarah and said, oh. So they grabbed her up, and Abraham knew. He said, I'm in trouble. So Abraham said, listen, uh, 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 what is, uh, we want her. Abraham said, oh, you can have her. That's my sister. Now, you say, but Lee, I thought Abraham was a righteous man. He was. Te 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 technically, Sarah was his half-sister. You say, but Lee, what was they doing back, back then? It was different. It was different. Don't be looking at Abraham like he was so. It was different back then. Where do you think Adam's sons, who do you think they married? But anyway, that's another whole. It was different back then. All right? Don't try that stuff now. Tell me, ain't a whole bunch of brothers at church. This brother's my cut. Don't, no, 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 no. Just pre praying. So here, Abraham. But you know what happened? He, they took Sarah, took him to the king, took her to the king. The king said, whoa, praise the Lord. Man, y'all blessed me today. Bought her up in, washed her up, put her together, this, that, and the other. But next thing you know, some bad stuff start happening. Some difficult stuff start happening. The home wasn't, his life wasn't as, 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 he as tight as he, as it was and that he knew it should be. And he kept trying to figure it out and try. He said, something ain't right, something ain't right. And, and then he had to come and find out. And God said to him, the reason why things aren't as tight in your life, the reason why you're going, dealing with this and dealing with that is because the woman you just married already got a husband. She already got a husband that ain't yours. So Abraham had enough humility that he said, hold on. I'm not going to keep trying to put a, 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 a plugs in these holes all through my life. I got to deal with the issue. He could have kept trying to deal with this and deal with this and deal with this. But he had enough humility. He said, you know what? Get yourself up. Amen. You got to go about it here. Amen. And he sent her back. So here. Abraham in chapter 13 and Lot had their separation. You know about the companies got too big. big. He said, Lot, choose where you want to go. And Lot looked at the well watered plains. You better be careful when you're making decisions in the flesh. You know what? I'm not, I'm on my way to preach, but I'm preaching on my way to preach. So here he was, and he's sitting there, and Lot, he says, Lot, uh, our, we don't want, let, let there be no strife between. That's spirituality. Spirituality don't like strife. Man, we don't want no strife between us. Man, I don't like you. I'm looking at you. No, man. Spirituality, we don't want no strife. So he said, whatever you take your people, you go. We'll go the opposite. Instead of Lot getting on his knees and praying, seeking God's face, he looked and said, woo, it's well, woo, woo, it's lights down there, woo. Bro, you don't even realize Sodom. And he chose the well water, that which looked best to the natural eye. See, you got to be careful, saints. Don't just marry somebody because they look good. Don't just marry him based upon his checkbook. You better pray it through. You must run and find out afterwards. I hold on. You better. The Bible says, seek him with all thy heart. Here he made a fleshy decision and it almost cost him. Well, it did cost him. Half of his family and his wife. So chapter 13 is about the separation. Chapter 14, Lot. Actually, Sodom and Gomorrah went to war. And Lot was taken in chapter 14. And Abraham went, heard about it. He took 300 men, went to war. Captured Lot and his family back. And after he captured them back, the king of uh, Salam, which the historical, uh, uh, those who study Hebrew really say that word Salam means Jerusalem. So the king of Salam or Jerusalem was a man by the name of Melchizedek. He was also the high priest at that time of the one true God. He was so moved that he blessed Abraham upon his return that Abraham had dealt with the enemies of Jerusalem and also the king's of Sodom and Gomorrah were thankful 
He didn't go and save Sodom and Gomorrah because of Sodom and Gomorrah, but because his family was there. The king afterwards of Sodom and Gomorrah, that wicked place, said, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that, keep all the stuff. So, man, he said, listen, I'm not, take, I'm not accepting nothing from Sodom and Gomorrah. I just want my people out. I don't want nothing that you have. I'm not doing, going to no a pack with you. I, 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 don't, I want no parts or lot to do with you. And God saw his faithfulness and his integrity. So now... In chapter 15, God goes to renew the promise. Come on and read. After these things, yes. the word of the Lord came unto Abraham yes. in vision, saying, mm -hmm. Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield mm -hmm. and thy exceeding great reward. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of the house in this... Eliezer of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. It's been some time, Lord. But you ain't giving me no seed. Say, sometimes God gives a promise, but you got to be patient. Don't go do something different. Be patient. Trust God. Wait on God. Well, for time's sake, I'm just going to just let you know kind of what happened in this part because we got to get to the meat. And I pray you get, give, pray for me this morning. We got a burden. Sarah messes around and try to help him. Don't try to help God. If God give you a promise, stand on that promise. Don't you go try to help him. If you don't trust God to fight your battles, don't try to help him. Calling little meetings over here to say, just pray. You're going to mess around and confuse stuff. Caused a major problem of throwing out of her side for years to come that she ended up having to deal with because she wanted to help God. Go to verse number 18, chapter 18. Twenty-four years later, Abraham is now 99 years old. Listen, saints, a delay don't mean it ain't coming. Oh, Lord, let me say that again. Just because God delays don't mean that the blessing is not on the way. Come on, come on, don't give up, amen. Come on and read. 18, 18. 18.1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Marah. Uh-huh. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Uh-huh. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, Three men stood by him. So he had waited 24 years. And God said, let me go down now. And let me confirm the promise. Come on and read. And he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo. Yes. Three men stood by him. My Lord. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door. Now these were men, but they really weren't men. They had the form of a man, this, that, and the other, but they were angelic, heavenly beings. Amen. That's why you got to be careful how you treat people. Yes. Hebrews 13, 2 says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. So here, Abraham sensed something different, and he went and did what, brother? And bowed himself toward the ground. Yes. And said, my Lord. Yes. If now I have found favor in thy sight. My Lord. Pass not away, I Come pray on. thee, yes. from thy servant. Yes. Let a little water, I pray thee, be fetched. Come on. And wash your feet. Hospitality. And rest yourself yes. under the tree. Yes. And I will fetch your morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, you shall pass on. Mm -hmm. For therefore are ye come to your servant. Mm -hmm. And they said, so do, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened to the tent and to Sarah and said, make ready quickly. Three measures of fine meal needed. Come on. To make cakes upon the earth. Yes. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf. So he came and good. told Sarah, Sarah, they're here. The angels are here. They're here to declare. Now come on and read. And gave it unto a young man and he hastened to dress it. Come on. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. Read. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. Yes. And they said unto him, where is Sarah, thy wife? Come on. And he said, Behold, in the tent. Come on. And he said, I will certainly 
return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo. So now they asked him, where's Sarah at? He said, Sarah's up in the tent. So she was some distance away. She wasn't with Abraham while Abraham is now talking with the, uh, the angels who's now reinforcing what God is about to do. It's been 24 years, but now it's time to show up and show out. All right. Sarah wasn't with him. Read. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Yes. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. Uh -huh. which was behind him. Uh huh. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Uh huh. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So here he said, Sarah shall have a son. He reinforced it. It's going to happen. We're here. Sarah said, I couldn't hardly believe it before. I was 65 before. You know how old I am now? Do you know what, how long this, do, do you know who I'm married to? Do you know what, he ain't. Read, Brother Frank, we going somewhere this morning, Brother, read. Therefore Sarah laughed with him, with her, within herself. She did what? Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. Come on. Saying, after I am waxed old. So here she laughed within herself, not audibly, but in herself, and she mumbled some stuff. I'm old. Do you know who I'm married to? So on and so forth. Come on and read. Saying, after I am waxed old. Yes. Shall I have pleasure? Come on. My Lord being also old. He real old. Read. And the Lord said unto Abraham. Yes. Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Hold on. She was way far away. And it wasn't even within earshot, so to speak. But she happened to lean in, no doubt, and heard it. She didn't even laugh audibly. But the angel stopped. He said, what in the world is she doing? What's going on here? Why did she? Pray for me this morning, saints. The title of this morning's sermon is Don't Laugh. Pray for us this morning, saints. Pray for us this morning. When God is endeavoring to work in order for the glory to be what he wants it to be, it has to be impossibilities. Any time you see God working, any time you see God moving, you have to remove unbelief out the picture. You have to believe God. God is endeavoring to do some mighty stuff. God is endeavoring to be unleashed. He is endeavoring to move in this land one more time. God is burdened. This thing is about to wrap up. God is wanting the church to get their hands off. My God, do not let unbelief stop me. Y'all better not laugh when I give you a promise. When I let you know what I'm about my God, to do, my God. you better not laugh. Oh, Don't you laugh. Don't, laugh is unbelief. Laugh uh, is doubting God. Laugh God. is saying, I don't believe what you just said. I look at my circumstances and they're more real than your promise. You can't laugh. My Lord. God tells you what he's about to do. You have to believe him. Don't my you God. worry about your situation. Amen. Don't you worry about your my condition. Lord. Don't look at your children. Don't look at those as backsliders. God is well able to do exceedingly and abundantly my God, my above God. all that we can do ask or think but my we God. can't laugh my lord my lord amen amen so here this these angels stopped everything they said hold on i'm not going no further with this why is she up there laughing see when a person's laughs they're not laughing at the situation. They're laughing at the person that made the promise. It's personal. Laugh is to seriously doubt, to find the presented possibility humorous, to scorn at the thought of, to have no faith, to respond at something presented as unbelievable, as being out of the realm of possibility, having no confidence in. It's kind of like if somebody was to come up, a rookie was to come up in 1990, 91, 93, 94. Young man named Michael Jordan was then known as the best ball player in the world for a rookie to come up to him and say, Mike, I can take you. 
In other words, he's saying what you just declared is out of the realm of possibility, young man. I'm not even taking serious what you just said. I'm doubting if you have the ability to perform what you just said. When Sarah laughed, it was an affront to God himself. It was an affront to the angels that God had sent. It was an affront to the whole economy of heaven. If she would have cried, if she would have been quiet, if she would have been this, angels may not have said nothing. But she laughed. Within herself. Not even audibly. My God. But within herself. All right. <laughs> the angels said, what in the world is this? Check Abraham. What is Sarah laughing at? Sarah tried to, I didn't, I didn't laugh. We heard you. But I, it wasn't even, all, I was, she didn't technically lie. Because she said, I didn't laugh. She was saying, I didn't, aha, it don't matter. Any unbelief God sees. It don't matter. He said, yes, you did laugh. Who do you think we are? Who do you think sent us? Who do you think gave us the word? Well, you understand how old? He knew how old Abraham was when he gave it. He was 75 when he gave the promise. He waited 24 more years. What you laughing at? When you laugh as it pertains to the promises of God or there's unbelief, you're not laughing at the situation. You're laughing at God's ability to perform what he said. Mm. That's serious. That's serious. Pray for me this morning. Nothing can hinder God from working. It doesn't matter how big the problem is. God is the God of the impossibilities. Amen. Amen. The whole thing was founded upon impossibilities. How do you bring a world just into existence? Perfectly arranged together. The galaxies, the, all these different elements of the planet and the gravity and oxygen and, 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 and the, uh, 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 the greenery and all the, the water and, and, and all these different things. They're all impossibilities. But you're going to laugh. Nothing can stop. I don't care how difficult a situation is. Nothing can stop me but laughing. My God, my God, my Lord. Go over to Matthew. We're going to pray for me this morning, saints. Pray for me this morning. Go over to Matthew. 6, verse 5. Whenever you're trying to inspire somebody, whenever somebody is going through something, you got to take this message and give it straight to them. The devil will try. And the devil, number one objective is to get you to laugh at God. The devil's number one. You're going to see this in this message. The devil moved in on Sarah and said, look at your circumstances, not look at the promise. Look at your circumstances. It's already been a delay. You dead or now than you was to begin with. And he more twice dead. Now this and there. And the devil pushed in unbelief, unbelief, unbelief. You know, the Bible it says in Hebrews, for it is impossible. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The devil knows my only hope is not their circumstance or their situation making it look worse. My only hope is to get them to laugh. That's my only hope. And he showed us and he exposed it with Sarah. My only hope is to get them to laugh, to get somebody to come in a room and tell you, oh, that looks so bad. You better quit laughing. Get up out of here with that laughing. We ain't trying to hear that right now. Y'all crazy. Y'all just believe. Y'all just following the man. No, no, we're not following men. We taught. We was taught not to laugh. When it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the promises of God, amen, we take it real seriously, amen. You say, what if God lied? He can't lie because of two immutable things. It's impossible for God to lie. He is the reward of them that diligently seek him. My God, my God. We Amen. don't laugh. Amen. Amen. It don't matter how dark it looks. We don't laugh. My Lord. It don't matter how impossible the situation may seem to be. We don't laugh. My God. Come on, read. Pray for me this morning, saints. Pray for me this morning. Come and on. When, and when thou prayest. Yes. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Yes. 
For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the That's corner. That's Matthew of the 9. I'm sorry, 9 4. Sorry about that. It says 6. Matthew 9 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, yes. said, Wherefore thinketh ye evil in your hearts? Yes. For whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, uh -huh. or to say, Arise and walk. Hold on. What y'all laughing at? You laughing at divine healing? I don't believe that God can heal. What you laughing at that for? What you think is worth for me to actually say, to deliver you from crack cocaine, heroin, forgive you for everything you've ever done wrong, set you free? You think it's more harder for me to do that? Or for me to tell that tumor, cease? My God. Don't be laughing at me. My Lord, amen. Don't laugh. My God. You don't understand. It's no different for me to deliver that person than to heal that person. What y'all laughing at? My God. Quit laughing at my me. My Lord, amen. I'm well able. Amen. Do you know who you're dealing with? My God. Quit laughing at me. I ain't no joke. My Lord. You may say you got old. I'm not old. I'm amen. the same yesterday, today, and My today. God, my God, I'm amen. I am the Lord God. I change not. My Lord. Quit laughing at me. Amen. I am well able. I am well able. My God. To back my word up. Amen. Don't you laugh at me. Folk come in, they see a situation, your in-laws, your outlaws, your whoever, they don't understand how you, uh, why you trusting God, this and the other. Listen, man, don't, don't laugh. Don't laugh. My God. Just stand still and watch. Amen. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. God is well able. So here, he proclaimed to them that it was imperative for them not to laugh. Now, Go to verse, back to our text. Sarah laughed. Go to verse 13. Come on, we're going to line this up. And the Lord said unto Abram. Yes. Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Mm -hmm. Is anything too hard what for the Lord? What you laughing at? You see, he brought it right back to God. He said, you're not laughing at this situation. You're laughing at God. What you laughing at? Is anything too hard for God? It don't matter what the circumstance is. This is the battle of our time. Unbelief. This is the battle of our time to get folk to quit laughing. Get unbelief out the room. So here he said, despite the deadness of your womb, despite his brokenness, you about to have a son. My God. What you laughing at? Go clothes shopping. Get the little baby basket Don't sit up here laughing at this, that, and the other, looking at your circle. No, 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 no. It's anything too hard for God. That's the message that God has for the church at this hour. Don't laugh. When it comes down to the promises of God or what God is endeavoring to do, don't laugh. I don't care how difficult, how difficult the situation may be. Dealing with the unsaved. I don't care how bound your family may be. I don't care how long they've been out there in sin. It doesn't matter what your children say in frustration about not believing in the Bible, that it was written by uh, this man or that man is fake, is phony, by not believing in, my God, holiness or righteousness, not believing in the one true church or whatever other thing they were raised up in. Don't listen. Don't listen because what the devil wants you to do is to laugh. Laugh is almost like God's kryptonite. You heard of Superman, it was like kryptonite. The only thing that could stop Superman was kryptonite. The only thing that can stop God is you laughing. My God, my God. That's why he said, without faith. One place it said, Jesus. He went and he went forth in the temple. And they said, man, we all about to have a revival. They said, man, don't believe. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're right. That was powerful what we heard. But <laughs> who, said, who did it? Jesus, right there, Jesus. Master Jesus. Okay, I know he broke it down. He the Messiah. Do you know who that is? That's, that's Joseph's son. That's from Albion, from Nazareth. James, that's James' brother. That's, that, that's, she, that's Jesus. It said a prophet is not without honor, saving the same. 
his own house. He's that little Jesus. That, I don't know if they had a nickname for Jesus, whatever that was. They probably called him his nickname. Jesus, come, come. And it said, he could do no mighty works. They appear laughing. <laughs> That's just Jesus. That's just Jesus. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Laugh hinders the hand of God. So here, no matter how bound a person may be, when God is reviving, saving all these individuals, all these saints, children, all these back, saving all these people, the devil wants you to laugh and say, my situation is worse. My God. My family member is just so much. You don't understand, believe what my children said. They haven't been to the church. I loved it last Sunday, the Sunday before last. In the office, I'm sitting there. One of the sisters came in and said, Brother Lee, you have no idea. I'm so encouraged. My faith is built up so high. I said, what's going on? She said, me and my daughter have not talked in years. I'm not going to tell you the rest of the conversation in detail. When the daughter sat there and began to articulate, Brother Lee, God is dealing with me. I'm almost there. See, the devil wanted the mother to laugh because the space that was there, maybe some things that were said, maybe the daughter was upset by the way she was raised, saying this stuff. So the devil wants the mother to laugh so the mother won't have the burden that she needs, not knowing that God was working on the daughter. She was here last Sunday. She said, now I'm about to start coming back regularly and pray for me because I want to be saved. Don't laugh. The scripture said over in Kings, he said, there was none like unto Ahab who fully sold himself. See, saints, if we laugh or we have unbelief get in, we won't pray for our siblings like we need to pray. Saints, do you realize some of them got more poured into them because of ancient landmarks that when they come in, it's going to be like they've been saved for 10 years. They gonna help usher in the second coming. My God, like never before, your children, all those Sunday schools you brought them to, don't you laugh. I don't care what they say. I don't care how prosperous they may look or may think. They may come around you with nice outfits on, fancy cars. The devil wants you to laugh. Say, well, they ain't going to get saved. Why would they get saved? They got too much going on or they got too, they're too bound. They're too... Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to laugh at my children. I believe God. I believe God is able to reach them. The apostle Paul was way out there and messed up. Come on now. You was out there and messed up. Y'all was the tough cases in here right now. So we don't need to laugh at nobody else. We need to pray more fervently and keep room in the benches, my God. You say, Brother Lee, what about backsliders? See, spirits are laughing at backsliders. But what backsliders need to do is to pull this inspiration that we're up under. My Lord, and point at those spirits in the face and say, don't laugh. You say, Brother Lee, give me the Bible on it. I will. There was a man, a judge in Israel. Amen. And he went and he messed around and got too close to a cute girl named Delilah. And eventually he told her the secrets of his heart where his power lied. First he said, if you tie my hair, then you do it. Then eventually he said, if you cut my hair. See, spirits that stay on you till they break you. You better be careful to with that girl. Please, you don't love me. Just come over here. Just let me, let me, let me massage. Let me. Get. He got too close. Hair cut off. They came. Bound him up. He was grinding. Put his eyes out. That's what sin will do. Sin put your eyes out. You don't see clearly no more. It binds you up. Bound by habits and spirit. You say, I ain't going too far. That thought is too far. So, so, so here. So here uh, uh, he was bound and and then he was grinding and they threw a party. So they over here in the party and they joyful and they celebrate and they're filled with laughter. Don't laugh. So he's sitting there and they sitting there. And they like, yeah, we got him. Yeah, the people of God. Yeah, we probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just see him. You see when he tried to get up and, 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 and shake himself as he did before. But he was so weak. <laughs> uh, we got her. We got, we got no doubt. They invited more to the party. Maybe seven times more to the party than was originally invited. Oh, I'm preaching. 
You say, Brother Lee, what are you talking about? Why would they invite seven times more? What does that got to do with anything? See, when a person's out there in sin, they're bound up. But if they ever get saved and then they go back to sin, they get seven more spirits. Worse. So here they partying and laughing. But oh, over here, while he was bound up, <laughs> he's sweating one day. And the devil was telling him, he heard them laughing. And the devil telling him, you messed up. You backslid. You went too far. He no doubt was crying. <laughs> Wiping his face and he sweating. And no doubt he messed his eye one time. And messed around and wiped his head. And he was crying, feeling hopelessness. But something hit him. He felt some scratchy stuff on the back of his hand. When he wiped his head. So he, no doubt, wiped it again. He didn't have a mirror, so he had to just kind of wipe, wipe. Oh, his hair began to grow again, representing some hope. My God, my Lord, some hope. my Lord, amen. Some inspiration. My God. Then he said, "Lad, somebody come here. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, 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 Samson. Where you want to go? Help me out. Help me out. Leave. Where you want to go? Le leave me. Leave me to the pillars. My One God, more time. my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. One more time. Amen. Leave me. My God. Where the pillars in this place at? My God. Leave me to the pillars. One more time. He got to the pillars and he cried out to God. God, I'm sorry. Lord, just renew me one more time. Just give me one more shot at it. Just give me one more chance. My God. And the inspiration came. God gave his strength back. Samson, look up at those that was laughing. All right. And no doubt he said, don't laugh, I'm about to push. My God. That's what a backslider needs to say this morning. Don't laugh. You may have got me bound up my Lord. out here, but I feel my hair growing. My God. I feel some inspiration. My Lord. I feel some hope. My Don't God. Laugh. They need to come forward. And my God, let God Amen. do that strength Amen. one more time. Amen. Amen. Don't laugh. Don't my laugh. God. Amen. Impossible situations have come up on the people of God. Amen. You got a room right now with individuals that have gone back, that came back. Amen. And they were able to tell those spirits. Don't laugh. Those spirits say, they ain't, ain't no way you getting out. Laughing at them. Ain't no way you ever getting back. And you going too far. Matter of fact, I done entwined your life. You in relationships. You got habits. You got too much going on. Ain't no way. In fact, the saints, they won't even accept you back. And they're, they're just all this stuff, my God. But my God, one day, they were able to tell those spirits that had them by how, don't you laugh at me. Who's laughing now? Who's laughing now, amen? It said he killed more in his death than he did in his life. God is a God of second chances. My you got to come back God. and sit no bitch. You can come back and labor for God. Amen, amen, amen. Restoration, my God. I don't care how difficult the situation may be. Amen. So here you had Jericho. God, after he brought them through the Red Sea, they were in the wilderness. Then he brought them through another body of water called the uh, uh, Jordan River. They came through the Jordan River. One of the first cities they came to was walled, huge walls that multiple chariots could go at one time. Huge wall, maybe biggest platform, just huge wall. Not no little wall, huge wall. God said, <laughs> Amen. That, take that city. Take that city. See, there's some situations that look impossible. All right. There's some situations that's well walled in. There's some situations that look like it won't come down. You're going to face some situations that look like there's no way. This thing is too, this wall is too big. This wall is too thick. This situation is too impossible. But my God, God told them, march. No doubt, they had been involved in warfare. So they've seen people come with battery rams, with arrows, with this, and they've seen how they may try to take a wall down, hit the, uh, 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 the doors or the archways, or hit one spot, break it down, or build up a little thing to climb up over the wall. Or do, they didn't see none of that. All they saw was some, some people of God not fighting, just marching. That's another whole sermon. 
think no doubt look on the wall. They start making, they have phones back then. They have tweet. Uh, they probably just kind of like door, uh, ear to ear, like that was Twitter back then. Hey, look, look at these, get up on the wall. Look down there. You got to see these crazy people. Look, they looked up there. They ain't seen no weapons. They ain't seen no arrows, no battery ram. They grab some other people, they begin to look. <laughs> they think they're going to defeat us by just marching. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. They probably, it was a comedy show. <laughs> look, it's hot and sweat. Look at that one sweating right there. Look at her. Oh, she barely make. Look at her. She barely make. Look at it. She kind of lagging behind, but she's still marching. She may, be like, she may be getting a little tired, but, but she's still marching, though. Go ahead and laugh. Laugh at me because I'm in the back. Laugh at me because I'm getting a little tired, but I'm still marching, though. Keep laughing. My Keep on God, laughing. Amen. Go ahead. So they just laughing and laughing. And on the seventh day, they saw something different that caused a real, real comedy show. They marched one time, and they didn't stop. And they marched again. And they get by the fifth time, they just, no doubt, just <laughs> Keep on. But the seventh time, the seventh time, no doubt in their heart, they said, go ahead. No doubt. They were real spiritual, so they didn't say nothing. But no doubt in their heart, they probably were saying something along the line. Okay, y'all laughing now. Go ahead. Y'all laughing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. But on that seventh time, they said, blow the trumpet. The trumpet blew. My God. And they said, shout. These folks started shouting. My God. That laughter turned to sorrow. The wall came down, not in a heap, but it said the wall came down flat. The only way a wall that big can come down flat is if every brick upon brick is all torn down. And also God opens up the earth to bury everything that was there. And the wall came down flat and they walked, my God, flat on flat ground on in. In other words, there will be some impossible situations that seem like there's no hope. Don't you get carnal. Don't you fight. Keep marching. My God, they may be laughing right now. They may be talking about you. They may be dogging you out. They may be setting rumors against you. They may be taking false stories about you. Just keep marching. My God, don't worry about it. They're laughing right now, but you're going to get the last laugh. My God, my God. Amen. Amen. Here he but said, no matter is, amen. what the situation is. And in fact, the entire scriptures of God is filled with one lesson after another regarding don't laugh. Here they sold Joseph into slavery. And no doubt they laughed. But every time and everywhere they sent him, God was with him and he prospered. In fact, one day they needed him. My Lord, the devil said, I got Israel. I'm going to put them out of commission. I got them. They can't go nowhere. They're going to starve to death. But God had already devised a plan for their brother through jealousy to sell their other brother. And God told the young man, tell them, don't worry about it. What y'all meant for bad, God meant for good. Amen. Don't laugh. My God. The devil said, I'm laughing. They're done. They're done. God spared. In fact, the devil's always been trying to wipe out God's people. And when he had tried that temp, it didn't work. He said, all right. But another king arose that didn't know Joseph. Mm. And he put hard taskmaster on the children of Israel. And no doubt the devil said, we got them. We're going to eliminate the people of God. And no doubt they were laughing. But it said the harder they were on the people of Israel, the children of Israel, the more they grew. Yes. Spiritual lesson. That's why the devil is risky for the devil to attack you for real. It's risky for the devil to come after you for real because if he don't get you, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. You going through a tough trial? It's risky because if he don't get you, woo, your muscles, your biceps, woo, your faith going to be at another level. He said, go ahead. Devil said, I'm going to laugh. I got him. I got him. We got him. It didn't work. Well, and this calls about even a calling. The devil says, Pharaoh, eliminate. But God had a child that was put in a bassinet. That the enemy thought, we got them. But God said, don't laugh. Don't laugh. I'm always going to have a ram in the bush. I'm always going to have, so you, you, y'all don't say, I got this thing. So then he says, I'm going to have y'all raise the person that's going to destroy y'all. You don't mess with no devil. <laughs> y'all, you know about you. You know how the devil used that one. You, you, okay, you, you know the story about Jehoshaphat. This thing, he's sitting there, and he's, they all came around and said, "We going we got him boxing. We're going to storm this in there." They just stayed low, prayed, and they killed each other. Yeah. Here, here they was going to team up against the saints. We going to team up and destroy the saints. Man, within thirty days, they was fighting each other. <laughs> the saints just on their knees. Lord, in Jesus' name. We're not fighting in Jesus' name, Lord. This too shall pass in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't mess with no saints of God. Not no real saints. Mess with some carnal ones. Not no real ones, though. So here, oh, I'm sorry. I got to put this in because we got time getting away from us. God is going to raise up. And I feel this with everything within me. I see the need and I see the humility and I see the consecration. I have no doubt in my mind. They were sitting among some gifts, ministers, missionaries. I see it. But when God call you and what he call you to, don't you laugh. You say, Brother Lee, give me Bible on that. Moses, come here. I need you to go to Pharaoh and I need you to lead the people of children of Israel out of Egypt. I need you to be their leader. <laughs> no, you all don't make, go, go do what that but. Me? Do do what? What? Me? I can't do what? Me? God, you want me to do what? Don't you laugh! It's not you! Lord, I can't, me? Lord, I can't teach, Lord, me? I can't get up in front of the people, I'm so afraid, I can't lead no, sir. Lord, me? I can't call a new conference prayer, Lord, Lord, me? I can't, don't you laugh! Don't you look God in the face and say, I can't, I can't, I can't. Quit laughing at God. We need laborers. So here, Lord, I'm preaching. Come on, saints. Don't you sit. I don't care how long you might have been saved for a while. My God, don't sit and base your past upon your future. God is able to turn a new page in your book. And don't y'all laugh when God put the anointing on them. You might mess with them and miss your blessing. That's what happened to Jesus. When Jesus went to the temple among his own people, they laughed at him. And they missed their blessing. Don't you laugh when God said, I want to use you. And don't you laugh when God does it. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Let God do what he want to do right through here. So God spared his people on a consistent basis down in Babylon. They said, we're not going to bow. They said, man, listen, y'all better bow to these idols when we play this music. These three little boys said, man, we ain't bowing. We ain't doing it. The Bible said, I was setting, uh, I'll have no other gods before me. We're not doing that. I ain't, I'm not going to bow to nothing but God. They said, listen, we're going to throw you in that fiery furnace. They said, that's fine. God is sustaining us. <laughs> Turn it seven times. <laughs> Turn, it seven, <laughs> Turn it seven times hotter. Watch what happened. They did. They turned it seven times hotter. And they turned it so hot that they had their big old strong men that came to throw them in the furnace. And they couldn't even get close to the furnace before they got burnt up. Trying to throw the people of God in the furnace. You must well get burnt up to yourself. So here he went down. And the king, they said, hey, uh, they said they were going to survive this, man. You might want to go check. The king was stirred. He couldn't hardly sleep. He said, hold on, let me get up. They laughing. They said, they're going, king, look. 
He said, hold on. Hey, uh, leader, chief leader of the armies, what was our, how many did we convict? What, wasn't it three, right? No, you, you got the numbers messed up. See, that's what's wrong with the MDOC and any other city. I get their numbers mixed up. See, they needed criminal justice reform way back then. Y'all over, y'all convicting folk that wasn't even supposed to be convicted. Y'all put, why y'all put these four people? Hold on. That fourth one looked different. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. He said, actually, it looked like the son of... Whoa! Whoa! They came forth. They said their hose wasn't smelling like smoke, and they didn't have no bitterness, no attitude. They told the king, king, live forever. No bitterness. I'm good. Y'all laughed. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. You know about Dan. You know, and I can keep going with this. And let me just say this. I don't care how difficult or how impossible the situation may be. You know about Lazarus. It was four days. Jesus came back. He said, okay, where is he at? I got it. They said, he stinks now. You're going to talk about now you're going to come back. He's coming back. No, no, I'm going to raise him up. Okay, I half believe you, but I'm half laughing. I'm half believing and half laugh. You said, Billy, how did they half believe? I don't care how impossible your situation is. Don't you laugh. They said, well, uh, 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 we believe, uh, 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 yeah, you're going to raise him up in the last day. Oh, they, now they won't be a theological greatness. Uh, show their theological astuteness. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the last day, the resurrection. We know about the resurrection. You're going to do that. Jesus said, hold on. Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're Jesus. That's not my only name. I got plenty of names. What was you just talking about? You were just, uh, we were talking about the resurrection in the day. In the day. That's what you're going to do. No, the resurrection is not something I'm going to do. I am the resurrection. My God, my God, my God. I am. That's who I am. Amen. Don't y'all laugh at me. Get it right. Don't you tell me how bad he stinks. Don't you tell me how bad your situation stinks. Don't you tell me how long you had that condition. Don't you tell me how long they've been out there in sin. Don't you tell me how dark it looks. I am the resurrection. Don't my you laugh. My God, my God. Don't Amen. you laugh. Amen. I don't care if it's getting worse. I don't care if it's getting worse. You get anointed again. I don't care how dark it looks. Don't you laugh. Don't you sin. I'm just going to live with it. It's just going to happen. Quit laughing at me. I am the resurrection. You just worry about the stone. In other words, you quit laughing. Amen. You just worry about the stone. You just worry about that which is between me and getting to him. Unbelief. The only thing between God and God performing is unbelief. The stone. Quit laughing. They removed the stone out the way. Quit laughing. Lazarus. Lazarus. Come. And they said he had to say Lazarus because if he just said come forth, they said just millions of people. Would just, That's how much power he got. You don't mess with no God. He's a resurrection. When the resurrection, the, the resurrection, not Jesus, the resurrection say come forth. Y'all ain't even get my, you don't understand who Jesus is. He was the resurrection. My God, all and your he situation. said, Everything. the resurrection said, come forth. Lazarus. No matter how dark or difficult the situation may be, just don't laugh. This end time, it will be glory. God is going to have a glorious church and glorious people. He said the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Why? How believe it was great glory then? Why? Because the world is darker for one. The world is worse for one. You say, how is the world worse than before? Give me Bible. Line. The Bible said evil spirits and seducers shall wax. We're dealing with a worse world than they dealt with back in 75. But matter of fact, we're dealing with a worse world than they dealt with in 95. In 2005. So the worse the world is, the greater God's glory can be manifested. Amen. And number two, technology. Back then, it took a long time to get the word. They had to get it word to word, word mouth to mouth. You say, no, I believe in the sixth seal. They got it all out by the floor uh, on the gospel trumpet. That was mailed. Yeah. They were sending up something down on the floating Bethel. That was mailed. Today? In a moment. God can send this thing viral when he's ready and he's almost there. He said, just don't y'all laugh. Don't you laugh when you, when, when you hear God can move again in this end time. Don't you laugh. Don't you settle for what you've seen. Don't you laugh. You say, but Lee, but hold on. There's too much compromise and unbelief around. What you think Hebrews 12, 23, 24, 25 is about? 
He said, and once more, I'm going to shake. He didn't say the preacher's going to shake. This angel going to shake. He said, once more, I'm going to shake. I understand all this unbelief around. I understand all this compromise around. Folk bagging up on this and bagging up on that, talking about their church of God, nowhere close to what they used to be. Bagging up on things they once held. And some of that penetrate the camp of various congregations right here among us, maybe some. He said, you know what? I'm a shape. The heavens. Don't laugh. Well, how are you going to clean? There's so many people. You know, they, they ain't standing no more. As a matter of fact, but as soon as he got done preaching, they was out in the parking lot, and they said that uh, that's just man. And then he told sister, when he was praying for sister so-and-so, he was in the back corner, and he said, she better go get some help from the hospital. And then over here, they said, uh, we're not going to raise our children in Church of God standard. We're going to put on whatever clothes they want to wear and let them do what they want to do, cause we wanna, and we take them to the movie, and we're going to do this. And, yeah, and you, you sit there and say, God, God, I read the books. God. I see the glory is coming at this end time. God, I know it's got to come. I know, but Lord, I see some stuff all around that shouldn't be. I see, Lord God, Lord, in various camp meetings, Lord, even here, Lord, I need you. Lord, how is this going to happen? This is like five years ago. Lord, I, I see some stuff that shouldn't be. I went and told the pastor about it. He didn't do nothing. Oh, he did. He didn't do nothing. He just let them keep on teaching. He let them. Just, he knew that they were compromised. He knew their home wasn't up to the standard. How they going to get up before us and they home ain't in order? How I'm going to tell my children we don't do based upon this principle when they teachers allow their children to do? My God, Lord, how you doing? we ain't the same as we used to be back. But I'm just, just be patient. And God, Lord, how the glory going to come? Lord, I, I don't understand it. We want miracles. We want revival. We want power. But how can I bring somebody to a camp meeting and they need to see two works of grace? My God, but they get up in the pulpit and you can't tell if it's one work, preach or two. Where can we bring the people to get a clear word with clear inspiration where miracles and power can happen? It's too much rubbish. God said, don't you laugh. Don't you not believe. I shake. Next thing I know, I look up. Where they, where's so-and-so at? I heard they went out on the outskirts of Jackson somewhere. I heard they were... Don't laugh. Right. I'm shaking. Yeah, right. He said, when I get done shaking, only thing going to remain is that, which is 100%. I'm just going to just keep shaking. Don't you laugh. Don't you let unbelief come and say there won't be any glory in it in time. My God, I'm a shake. I'm a shake. I'm a shake. I'm going to keep shaking until there's nothing left but that which is rock solid, that which won't bend or break, that which is not to the left nor right, that which home is in order, that whose spirit is in order, that is standing on the word of God 100%, not picking and choosing. Don't laugh. I'm shaking this thing up. I got the church. I know what I'm doing. There will be glory. I'm going to shake stuff up to where there's no flesh remaining. I'm going to shake stuff up where there's no compromise around. I'm going to keep shaking. He said, oh, but, 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 but spirit. Our heart, hearts are too hard out there in the world. It's hard to get folks saved. God said, I'm going to shake the heavens, but I'm also going to shake the earth. Their hearts are hard, but I'm going to shake, and I'm going to keep on shaking. I'm going to go and shake, and I'm going to find, my God, those that's been out there hard-hearted for 25 years, I'm going to shake. My God, I'm going to keep shaking. I'm going to keep shaking and find those, my God, amen, that they're, they're, they're doing their own thing. That mama got to stay up at night and wondering what, what, what they come to the house smelling like and what they're doing. I'm going to shake and I'm going to keep on shaking. And my God, I'm going to shake the one that's got these little bags and handing them out all over the community with that little green stuff in it. I'm just going to just keep shaking. I'm going to keep shaking. I'm going to find those down and babbling, my God. And I'm just going to just keep shaking. I'm going to go to the prison facility. And my God, and I'm going to just keep shaking. I'm just going to shake, my God, and have those coming out of compromise that's tired of watered down religion, that's tired of watered down, my God. Word that want a hundred percent gospel, that want a hundred percent doctrine. My God, don't laugh. It's coming, saints. Don't laugh. Amen. Just watch and see. Talk about us. Say what you want to say, but we're not gonna laugh. We're gonna my believe God. 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 We're gonna my stand Lord. on the word of my God. Lord. And we're gonna see Amen. the glory Amen. of this in time. My God, my Shall God. Amen. Amen. My Lord. Amen. My God. My Lord. Amen. You say, brother Lee, what's going on? What you mean don't laugh? Get a call in the pulpit. Last time I was in this pulpit, I get a call. They said, hurry up. Call down. He passed out in the, while preaching. Brother Mark. I said, hold on, what? Call in the room. Go to prayer right now. Saints crying out before God. Rebuking every spirit that we can find to rebuke. My God, my God. 
sat there, eyes began to roll back of his head. But something happened. Something happened. He began to come back. And then we found out. Two days later, massive heart attack. They said zero to point three is the range of whatever this test was. Point three means that it's massive. Zero means it's fine. They said his was an 18. Not a point two nine, 18. Doctor said, how, how in the world did, we, did you walk in here? How in the world did this happen? Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Just trust. Saints, it doesn't matter what you're dealing with this morning. The only thing that can stop us, one of the main things, unbelief. Just believe God. Let him fight. Trusting whatever burdens God give you, you pray on those burdens. They're coming. We just got to make sure that we have inspiration in the camp. That no matter how far gone a person may be, how serious their situation is, we instruct them and encourage them. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. God can heal you. It does not matter. One recently got saved and said they're dealing with, I believe it's lupus or some form of a serious disease. They said they've been so inspired since they took their stand within the last two months. Said, I'm done laughing. My family's still laughing, but I'm done laughing. One after another. Another Saint's child got a call later on today. A special meeting planned. Salvation, I believe. But the devil wanted us to say, laugh. <clears throat> you remember that a few weeks ago? I was in the pulpit. Said my oldest son, praying about him, seeing he getting a little bit older. Said the world get his teeth in. It's going to be hard to get out. I said, Lord, but he gave me a, just a little bit of hope. He said, Dad, don't laugh. He said, Dad, I'm setting my schedule so I can make it to church. Wasn't even saved. I was able to come in the pulpit, declare it, stop laughing. Within 10 days, saints, I am convinced, convinced the higher level of faith that we're able to exhibit and expect it, expect it. I called this week, just several, all through the week. I was on on Wednesday. Oh, my God, out of state. Out of name. Oh, can y'all come here? What about you? What? I'm not laughing. I'm expecting anything. I don't know. I, it don't matter. Ted Turner, CNN. I don't know. I don't know what's going to go on right through here. But I know one thing. If we don't laugh, we're going to be able to see that, continue to see that. And I'm asking you, don't laugh for your household. As we sing a verse of song, if there's anybody need prayer, want to be saved, any backslider, don't worry about your situation. Don't laugh. Is anything too hard for God? Anybody need special help? Who's got a problem? Every sickness, every disease, his power to solve. every spirit, every imposition of the devil, situation. every issue against your marriage, every issue against your home, every issue that's is opposing you. Don't laugh. Don't look at it as an impossibility. Come on. Is anything? Let the congregation sing with us. Too, too hard. hard for God. Who's got a problem? Who's got it? Who's got a problem? My mind, my mind. Beyond his power to solve. The glory is God performing. He just needs somebody Our to perform. Situation. Just believe. Be in position. Be clear with God and believe. And see. Is my mind. My mind. Too hard for God. Is there anybody else that want to come? Just come on. Anybody want to be saved? Come on up at this time. If you want to give your life to God, it's just come on at this time. Your hands, you've done all you anybody want to be sanctified? Do. My mind. Don't laugh. You've given Tell the devil. God the you think problem. you got me bound up. It's no longer you think there's up no hope. to you. You think there's no way out. You've prayed the prayer. Keep laughing, devil. I just want to walk up here and give my now life to God. Watch God deliver, God's break every truth. chain, break every yoke. While Watch him fill me with joy, fill me with answer. peace. I'll bust up he your laughing party. My mind, my mind.
my, my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is anything my, my. too hard for God? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who's got a problem beyond his power? Tucker, don't you laugh. Don't laugh, Sister Tucker. Don't laugh. Don't worry, Sister Tucker. Don't laugh, Sister He's Lisa. Not the master Don't laugh, Sister Linda. Don't laugh, Sister Nisa. Don't laugh, Sister Jessica. Don't laugh, Sister Quati. Don't laugh, Sister Ella. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Just believe God, Brother White. Don't laugh. Don't learn to accept it. My God, don't learn to just live with it. The miracles, the power, the glory of God. We can't laugh. I don't care how long the situation has been in that situation. God is able. God is able. He's well able. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe God. The blinded eyes can be opened. It don't matter that God may get the glory. It's really only one. All right, amen. Is anything? Anybody want special prayer? You come forward at this time. Is anything? My, my, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You want to pray for your faith? Anybody need prayer for your faith? Walk down at this time. Bring your wife with you. Bring your husband with you. My God, we're done laughing. We're done laughing. We're done praying for stuff and it's staying the same. We are done laughing. We are done. My God, we're done with it. We believe God. I'm not going to laugh. I'm not going to laugh. We are expecting. We are expecting. Too hard for God. Lord, I'm not going to shift, but I don't know if you're going to heal me. I'm not going to take the med, but I don't. Quit laughing. You can laugh and don't take a drop of medicine. You got to believe God. Believe God. God is well able. God is well able. Who's got a problem? The glory, the glory of the latter house. We are done laughing. We're done with it. We're done with it. Every child can be saved. Every backslider can be reclaimed. We believe God. The only thing that can hinder God. Too hard for Quit God. laughing. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. As you were about to be anointed, don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. I don't care if it's a spiritual deliverance. Don't laugh. If there's a marriage that needs to be reconciled or just tightened up, you come and pray right now. You come right now saying our marriage needs prayer. Hey Amen. We're not going to live with it. The devil telling us we're going to get a divorce. The devil telling us we'll never fully forgive. The devil telling us we'll never fully have confidence. You all can be restored completely. Hey Amen. You can have power and glory in your home. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. God is able. God can have a pure church. God can have, amen, a standing congregation. I don't care how much uh, compromises all look. Don't laugh. He said, I will shake. I will shake. Amen. We just got to believe. We got to believe. Give me a couple more verses of that or something else. I feel the spirit is moving. 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 He's not a respected person. I'm thankful. I'm so thankful for what God is doing and what he's done. Amen. But that was last week. That was two weeks ago. Amen. We need something new right now. Thank you for what you did for Brother Mark. Thank you for what you did for Sister Ella. They said there was no way. Did you, you, you're in too tight of a spot. There's no way, Sister Ella, those teeth are coming out. There's no way you're getting up out of this one, not trusting God. Your testimony is going down. Yes, he healed you of cancer. Yes, he shut down the jail. But your testimony is coming down. Sister Ella, don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Don't you doubt. Don't you doubt. God is able. God is able, Sister Linda Holmes. Amen. Amen. If Sister Cynthia Page had a stroke and was able to walk up here, Sister Lisa, you can do the same thing. Don't you laugh. Don't you laugh. Don't you accept it. Don't you learn to live with it. Sarah laughed within herself. Said, I'm too old. My limbs are messed up, really. My leg and my arm, and this is messed up. God is able to strengthen your leg, your arm, the muscles, the tissue. God can do all of that. And you say, give me Bible on that. That man that was at the gate, beautiful, he hadn't walked before. He healed him and taught him to walk Who's at the same time. Problem? God is able. It's divine. Be it's called divine healing. It's divine. Quit thinking about it. Quit humanizing Our God. Quit laughing. God is able. He's not the master. 
I don't believe in living free from sin. I don't believe man is able. Quit laughing. God is able to deliver. God is able to keep. God is able. Quit laughing at God. God can enable you to live a holy life. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Quit laughing. Take a stand for truth this morning. Come out of Babylon. Come out of false religion. Beyond his power to solve Are there situations He's not the master of Is every head bow, every head bow Too hard for God Our Heavenly Father, we thank you For your goodness and your faithfulness We thank you, dear God, for what you're doing Among your people We're thankful for the mercy that you're showing one more time. We're thankful, dear God, that Father, dear God, in mercy and love, Father, you saw fit, dear God, to save each one of us. Father, we just thank you so much. And Lord, heaven's divine economy is based upon faith. It's based upon faith and the devil know it. Father, the way God gets glory is to take us beyond that which is normal and yet have us trusting. The way God gets glory is when some situation looks like it's an impossibility. Father, Pharaoh and his army, they laughed at the people of God. They got, one night they caught up with him. They said if they go to the left, it's a desert. If they go to the right, it's a mountain range. And in front of them is a Red Sea. Ha, 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 we got him. But Lord, you were well able that night to open up that Red Sea. They were able to walk through on dry ground. Pharaoh and them laughing selves tried to go in and they was drowned. Father, we're never boxed in. We are never, my God, in a tightness too difficult for you to deliver. Father, we rebuke the devil. We rebuke unbelief. Lord, if it's a spiritual need, teach us, Lord. Enable us. To not laugh at it if there's a deliverance that's needed father to god if there's faith that needs to be inspired father if there's a healing we believe in divine healing because it's what the word says father we believe dear god that you are able by your stripes we are healed you purchase our healing lord we believe god father the devil tried to break sister tucker the other night father she said her mind she couldn't go no further she said i cannot have another night like that the pain was too much the devil wanted her to laugh the devil wanted her to not believe but lord god the saints prayed dear god father dear god and god came through and delivered lord father we ask you to complete the work now thank you as she said she hasn't had any nights like that again lord father but we're asking you to complete the work lord father bring her about that wheelchair dear god father dear god we don't need to laugh at that father we we believe God you're able dear God father we lift up dear God our older saints several of them are silent sufferers dear God some of them dear God father dear God have, have just said dear God, I'm resigning myself to my situation I'm not going to shift but I'm not going to yet trust I'm not expecting God to change my situation but Lord we're praying that they would stop laughing this morning there's only one way you're going to believe or you're not there's no middle ground help them to expect dear God Father, dear God, Sister Lisa, dear God, Wilson, Lord, Father, the battle, you know each one. Thank you for the fighting, Sister Nisa, dear God. Father, you've seen Brother Johnny, dear God. Brother Kyle had a situation, dear God. Father, you see the couples at the altar right now. Father, you see couples that want to have children, dear God. Father, we're not laughing. We're not laughing, dear God. We're believing God. We are in the season of miracles. We are in the season. Father, we pray for every saint's child that may be seeming that they're too far gone, that they're bound up in an uh, improper relationship or they've said things against the truth. Lord, we're not going to laugh. And if we have, we're going to stop this morning. We're going to stop this morning. We believe God. Father, if you can save Kari, if you can save Tave, if you can save Kyle, if you can save Jarrell, Father to God, we're not going to laugh at nobody else. Since Devon ain't no joke, Jake wasn't no joke. Amen. We're not going to laugh at nobody. Quita wasn't no. Father, you are moving and we thank you for it and we believe God. 
We're expecting the revival fires to continue. The devil wants us to get comfortable and say that was just a period of time. But that was not a period of time. That's the end time glory. And it's not going to stop. It's going to just keep going and grow and grow and grow. We are not going to laugh. We believe God is bigger than us. It's bigger than this congregation. It's bigger than this state. It's bigger than this nation. We pray, dear God, you help us to have an increase in faith, an increase in expectation. And Lord, those that came forward, every need, we're praying that you touch. We're praying for a testimony. We're praying for breakthrough. Father, we were thinking, Brother Mark, why his job said he had to go get checked out. Why are you going to the hospital? Why? I said, Lord, what about this? And he calls, should I go, should I not? I said, listen, Brother Hampton said, if you have to go to get checked out for your job, this and the other, make sure you understand and set yourself. They're going to say what they need to say. And that's exactly what they did. But they thought they were going to break him by telling him you had a massive heart attack. You need an immediate surgery. You need a stent put in. You need blood pressure medicine. You need this, that, and the other. So on and so forth. You need, you need triple bypass. You need all of this stuff. He checked himself out. And Lord, I'm thankful that we were able to get that testimony because we didn't know if he just passed out because of heat. We didn't know, but it was a miracle that we may not have knew. But Lord, you knew what you were doing, amen. And we thank you for it. And that has inspired Sister Quatisha, dear God. That has inspired Sister Amber. Lord, that has inspired many other new converts. They said, I heard it, but now I see it, my God. We're not laughing around here, dear God. If it comes to any healing, salvation, sanctification, any stands, we're not laughing anymore. We love you from the depths of our heart. We trust you 100%. Although our situations look dark, although they look, my God, like there's no way out, Sister Tasha, no way out, Sister Marcina, no way out, Sister Rhonda, no way out. I don't care how long it's been since she heard from her daughter. We're not going to laugh. You were able to bring my God a daughter back last Sunday that had been gone for years and years and had not spoken to her mother. Lord, you can do the same for Sister Rhonda Anderson. We are not going to laugh. We are expecting a testimony. We love you from the depths of our heart. We appreciate you for inspiring our faith. We will hold on to it. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. You may be seated momentarily. Bless you, Lord.